lies convincingly and easily, and he can do it at the drop of the hat. And you've heard testimony about that. He's been doing it to all the people who trust him for years. Closing arguments from prosecutor Creighton Waters in the murder trial of former South Carolina attorney Alec Murdoch. Waters told jurors yesterday that Murdoch killed his wife and son back in 2021 because he was facing unbearable pressure from his financial schemes and decided that killing his family was the only way to keep everything from being revealed. Now court resumes this morning at 930 and the defense is set to wrap up its case with its closing arguments and joining me now is criminal defense attorney Taylor Bell. Now attorney Bell has been following this case very closely for the past few weeks and my first question for you and thank you for joining joining us this morning um, has to do with how do you think Creighton Waters handled the closing arguments yesterday? I think you did a really good job. I was hesitant initially. I thought he might dwell on the financial crimes, mm -hmm. but he didn't. He, he got to that point. Uh, he had his trilogy. He had the, mo the, the me means, opportunity, motive, got to that trilogy, kept hammering on that. He built this picture of this storm building mm -hmm. and then Alec had you know just crashed down on him and he committed this act and then at the end mm -hmm. uh, he, he went to his or he went to his timeline and narrowed it down that it couldn't be anyone else but Alec and these other possibilities out there are unreasonable and then at the end he got to the emotional side of the jury by empowering them to speak for Maggie and Paul. Mm -hmm. And so he hit everything that I think he needed to. Uh, I think he did a really good job. Was it a little long? Yes, but I think he did a good job. I also want to talk about him really explaining and pointing out that he understands that there is a lot of circumstantial evidence when it comes to this case. So can you speak to the importance of him really pointing out that Yes, he is aware of the fact that there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. However, it is just as powerful as direct evidence. Correct. Not every case is going to have the videotape of the incident occurring. Yes, there's videos everywhere in this world. And yes, I'm very surprised that there were no ring cameras or anything on those properties there. I yeah. mean, there were deer cameras everywhere. But at the end of the day, the judge is going to say direct evidence, circumstantial evidence are all equal. Mm -hmm. It's up to you as a juror to determine the credibility. Uh, so I think that's powerful that he got that out. He acknowledged the weakness of, of the lack of some of the direct evidence, but empowered them on the fact that circumstantial evidence is just as, uh, just as good as direct evidence. And I know this trial is the first time that many people at home have seen a case of this magnitude play out. And so I'm kind of going to have you give us a little court 101, if you will. Can you talk about the fact that a lot of times we see like movies and law and order and the closing argument is five or 10 minutes, but in reality, closing arguments actually are much longer. That's correct. They are. And it's because they want to hit the points that they've made of all the evidence. Mm -hmm. We had six weeks of testimony here. So he's wanting to go through and tie them in. Let, let's, let's make the, make it weave, weave the, uh, the, the quilt with all the points that he made so that the jury can go back there with that quilt and, and know exactly what it is and, and know that, you know, he, that evidence points to only one answer and that's guilty. And so that's what he did here. While it was long, mm -hmm. four hours. I, I think I said yesterday you it would be it. four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I expected that because this is a lot of material to digest. And the jurors don't have notes here. So he wanted to make sure he got that all across. I think he did a good job. Yeah. Now, speaking to the quilt that Creighton Waters put together, we know the defense today is going to want to unravel that quilt. What do you think they're going to do? What do you think their strategy will be going into today? So it's that one little string that they're going to pull, mm -hmm. keep pulling it, and then it all unravels. I kind of like the idea of the brick wall. Uh, you've got multiple bricks up there that make a wall. You start poking a couple of the bricks out, the, the Jenga type analogy. You start pulling them out, and then it all collapses. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the defense didn't have any really one theory throughout the case. Uh, they, they're dealt the case that you know, they're given. They don't mm -hmm. get to create the circumstances or the facts. Uh, they get the case and they've got to work with that. And so here, I think they're going to go with the overall, all right, push that brick out. That That's the doubt. 
-hmm. push that brick out. That's a doubt. And at the end of the day, the whole story collapses if you find that, that all the, you know, there's enough bricks knocked out. Yeah. So I think they're going to go with that. I think they're also going to go with the, the idea that how could a father do that to his child? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one thing that I'm gripping with. However, you know, people when they're underneath the influence of, of drugs will do a whole lot of things and hurt a whole lot of people. Mr. Bell, thank you so much for joining us.